The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. And Kraft, you know, makes the famous pasteurized processed cheese food Velveeta. Velveeta has a wonderful cheddar cheese flavor that's rich yet delightfully mild. It's delicious. And it's the finest quality cheese food you can buy because it's made by Kraft, the name that for years has meant only the finest in cheese and cheese foods. Get a package or loaf of Velveeta tomorrow and enjoy the cheese food of top quality Velveeta, made only by Kraft. <laughs> Since Mr. Bullard's sister, the attractive Paula Winthrop, and her daughter Babs moved in across the street, the great Gildersleeve has been giving particular attention to his personal appearance. And he has managed to make three personal appearances at Mrs. Winthrop's. Tonight will be his fourth. Gildersleeve, you're gaining ground. Well, why shouldn't you? Admit it. You're not a bad-looking man. Of course, I'm graying a little at the temples. And so is Ronald Coleman. <laughs> yeah, wonder if I shouldn't touch that up a little. No use in a fellow with a face as young looking as mine getting gray. No, he's distinguished. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the best looking water commissioner of them all? You are. Thank you. Oop. <laughs> Who said that? Leroy. Hi, aren't you still primping? Yeah, I'm not primping. I'm just doing the things any fastidious man does before a date. Yeah? You need some color, Unc. Why don't you pinch your cheeks a little more? <laughs> Leroy, I haven't been pinching my cheeks. Come on, let's go downstairs. Okay, I'll announce you. Presenting the fairest water commissioner of them all. And in the ditch, it's yeah! Oh, my goodness. Here he comes, boy. Oh, you look awfully nice tonight, Unc. Well, thank you, my dear. I thought you were going to wear your new suit. Well, it hasn't come from the tailors yet. I'll wear it next time. What a dude. Since Mrs. Winthrop moved in across the street, he won't even rake leaves in the front yard without a coat and tie on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it gets chilly out there. It's the fall of the year. Yeah, and I know who fell. <laughs> <laughs> you watch it, young man. We know you like her, Unky. I'm just surprised you don't see her more often. Well, Mrs. Winthrop has to give a lot of her time to her daughter. She told me that. And when you do go, you always come home so early. It just happened that way, Marjorie. The other evening, little Babs had the sniffles. The time before that, she wanted her mother to help her with her homework. Mm-hmm. What happened the first time? Well, the little girl came downstairs because she said she had a bad dream, and she wouldn't go back up. So you came home? Yeah. Uncle Mort, it's none of my business, but it sounds as though little Babs doesn't exactly welcome your visits. Yeah, you better watch out, Unc. What do you mean by that? Well, she's tricky. Remember the time I was riding my bike, no hands, and she stuck a broom handle through the spokes? <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, that was probably an accident. Yeah, I'm sure it was. She hasn't annoyed you since. No, but I'm not the one who's dating her mother. <laughs> yeah, Leroy, you and Marjorie aren't being fair to little Babs. How could she be anything but an angel with a mother like that? Well, I hope you're right, Unky. You bet. Yeah, don't you two wait up for me. Yeah, I won't be home until late tonight. <laughs> Leroy, you go to bed. What time are you expecting, Mr. Gildersleeve, Mother? Oh, any minute now, Babs. He's never late. No, I've noticed that. Why don't you go upstairs and listen to your radio this evening? All right. Mother... Why do you go out with Mr. Gildersleeve? Well... Is he the only bachelor in Summerfield? <laughs> oh, I really haven't investigated. Are you going to? Babs, I want to ask you something. What, Mother? When Mr. Gildersleeve comes over, do you deliberately try to make him feel uncomfortable? Is he uncomfortable? It's probably that tight suit he wears. <laughs> oh, there he is. Shall I go to the door? No, you go upstairs. I'll answer it. 
Hello, Mrs. Winthrop. You, Paula. <laughs> Hello, Throckmorton. Come in. Yeah, thank you. Uh, your brother's still out of town? Rumson won't be home until next week. Good. Hope he has a nice trip. Is uh, little Babs around? She's upstairs listening to her radio. You're cute. Wonderful invention, radio. <laughs> here, let me take your hat. You, yeah, thank you. Can we sit here on the lounge? A good idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is living. Say, I see you have logs in the fireplace. Well, I thought it might get chilly later in the evening. Well, I've never stayed here long enough to find out if it gets chilly later. <laughs> we have chased you home a little early, haven't we? Yeah, let's not take any chances tonight. Let's let the fire now. <laughs> I'd enjoy that. You bet. Yeah, I'll have it going in no time. There we are. Ew, wood's nice and dry. Look at it go. There's something about a boy and a girl in a fire. <laughs> Oh, I love a fire. Ooh, the lights are low. I like to lean back and watch the shadows flicker on the ceiling. Uh, you watch the ceiling. <laughs> I'll watch the firelight on your pretty face. Oh, now you're flattering me. Well, in a setting like this, everyone looks prettier. Me too? Mm, you too. Wow, this is going to be a great evening. <laughs> uh, Paula. Hmm? You realize this is the first time we've ever spent alone. Excuse me, Mother. Zeke. Oh, Fred. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Am I intruding? You no, not at all. I thought you were listening to your radio, dear. I decided I'd knit for a while. And you'll simply have to show me how to turn a sleeve. Oh, now, Babs, can't I show you some other time? But, Mother, I have to finish it before Christmas. Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm knitting Mother a sweater for Christmas. Well, glad you told me. Now I won't knit one for her. <laughs> Please, Mother. All right. Thank you. And while you show me, I'll sit here by the fire, between you and Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, you better give you a little more room. Isn't this cozy? Yes, indeed. Mr. Gildersleeve, would you be kind enough to stir up the fire? I like to watch the sparks jump. Yeah, glad to. Now, now pay attention, Babs. I'm watching. Yeah, I'll say she is. <laughs> oh, you make beautiful sparks, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, nothing to it. Now, I won't crowd you two. I'll sit down and watch the knitting lesson. <laughs> Oop, who's that? Mr. Gildersleeve, you sat on my new knitting box. Yeah, I did. Oh, oh that's too bad. Yeah, I didn't think it was there when I got up. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, surely you don't think I put it there on purpose. You no, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> it's all right. It's just an accident. Yeah, I'd be happy to buy you a new one, Babs. It isn't that. This one was given to me by Mother. Sorry, Babs. Mother. Oh, Throckmorton, don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm sorry it happened. Excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'll get the yarn out from under your feet. Yeah, yeah, pardon me. <laughs> Babs, don't you think you'd better run up to bed? I'll help you with this tomorrow. But, Mother, if I don't learn how to turn a sleeve, I won't sleep a wink tonight. Well, perhaps I should be on my way. It's getting a little late. 9.15. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Babs. Well, it's really very early, Throckmorton. You well, don't want Babs to miss her sleep. And I've been thinking, there's a dance at the Palm Room tomorrow evening. Perhaps it'd be nice to get out of the house. Yeah, I mean, go dancing. <laughs> Less. I'd like that very much. Good. Ta-ta. You tend to your knitting. Yeah, I know where my hat is. Mother, my knitting is unraveling. What? Yes, this. Something seems to be tied around my ankle. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, you've had your foot caught in the yarn. Now, how did that happen? You've yeah, I'm sorry, Paula. I worked three weeks on it. Sorry, Babs. <laughs> what a sorry evening. <laughs> yeah, I, George, there's nothing like a new suit. Turn around, Anki. Yeah? You like it, Marjorie? Hey, what's we're just admiring Unky's new suit, Leroy. Yikes! Strikes! 
chalk stripes, my boy. First one I've ever had. The stripes do slim you down, Anki. Well, not that I need slimming. I think they just show off his curves. <laughs> <laughs> You're all right, Leroy. Yeah, I guess I'll be on my way. Mrs. Winthrop is waiting. Hey, have a nice time, Uncle Mort. Are you going over there again, Unc, after what happened last night? Well, Leroy, it was all my fault that I got tangled up in that yarn. Let's face it, I was just clumsy. Well, I suppose it could have happened accidentally. Sure. And I don't blame Babs for being upset. She worked hard on the sweater. Yeah, I made it up to her today. In fact, I made it up to both of them. I sent Mrs. Winthrop flowers and little Babs candy. How do you like that? She practically throws them out of the house and he sends flowers and candy. What a character. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be home a little late tonight. Around 9.15? <laughs> Good night, Leroy. Good night, Marjorie. Good night, Auntie. Yeah, I hate to have Leroy grow up so suspicious of women. Huh? Who's that? Is that you, Gilda? <laughs> Hello, Judge. What brings you by? Well, I have a free evening. Let's go stepping. <laughs> yeah, you're too late. I already have an engagement. Must be important. I see you're wearing a new suit. Yeah, that's right. Well, I don't want to be late, Judge. Wait a minute, Gilda. Are you sure that you wouldn't prefer to go bowling with me? Hardly, Judge. Well, we could play canasta or something. Canasta. <laughs> Horace, I'll see you later. I'm due across the street. Well, if you don't mind, Gilda, I'll sit here and watch you greet your lady love. <laughs> Rubbernecking old goat. He probably thinks I'll kiss her when she greets me at the door. But he isn't going to see anything. Yeah, I wish he was. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Huh? Babs? Where are you? Up here at the window. Isn't that a new suit you're wearing? Yeah, oh, yes, it is. What have you got in that paper bag? Water. Water? <laughs> What's that for? I'm watering the plants in the window box. <laughs> uh, shouldn't you be using a pitcher? But it is beginning to drip. It is. You Babs, don't hold it over me. The bottom's coming out. Why well, can't let it spill in the house? You Babs, you watch it. Babs! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, your new suit. I'm so sorry. Uh, Gilda, I'm Pockets full of water. Floating cigars. <laughs> Where are you going, Gilda? I'm going home. Soaked. I have a feeling that girl doesn't like me. <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. When guests are coming for dinner, chances are you try very hard to serve a meal that's especially festive. And you make it festive with little extra touches here and there. Extra touches that are simple and easy, yet somehow add so much to your dinner success. So next time you entertain, try a Velveeta vegetable platter for a gay note. First, arrange your vegetables attractively on a platter. Baked red tomatoes and cooked broccoli make a good combination. And over these hot vegetables, pour a smooth golden cheese sauce you make with Velveeta, Kraft's smooth-melting pasteurized processed cheese food. This Velveeta vegetable platter has plenty of eye appeal and taste appeal as well because Velveeta sauce has such a wonderful, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. To make this easy Velveeta sauce, all you do is melt a half pound of Velveeta in the top of your double boiler. Velveeta melts so smoothly and easily, there's no need to cube it or grate it. Just cut a half pound piece right off the two pound loaf. Then gradually stir in a quarter cup of milk, season, and there you have it the smoothest golden cheese sauce you'd ever want. And a cheese sauce that'll make those vegetables more nourishing because Velveeta is rich in important food values from milk. Treat your guests and your family, too, to a Velveeta vegetable platter soon. Get a two-pound loaf of Velveeta tomorrow. It's the cheese food that's digestible as milk itself. Remember, Velveeta is made by Kraft, and the name Kraft assures you of finest quality. So get the cheese food of finest quality, Velveeta. Well, last night the great Gildersleeve had arranged to take his new girlfriend, Mrs. Paula Winthrop, dancing. 
But suddenly, cold water was thrown on his plans. Yeah, that daughter of hers. She didn't fool me. She didn't intend to water plants with that paper bag. Yeah, well, I think I'll drop in Petey's. I couldn't stay around the house this morning and take that corny kidding. Hello, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? Oh, I don't want anything in particular, Peavy. You might give me a cigar. Very well. You uh, want one you can smoke underwater? <laughs> Peavy, who have you been talking to? <laughs> the judge was in. You know, talky town crier. Well, I guess you've heard all about it. I hear Mrs. Winthrop's daughter is quite a pixie. Phoebe, that's going too far, dropping water from the upstairs window. Well, it has its amusing aspect. You might call that watering the water commissioner. (laughs) All right, don't rub it in. I'll admit I've been outmaneuvered so far. Phoebe, why is it that I can't seem to get along with Mrs. Winthrop's daughter? Well, instead of being so palsy with the mother... Why don't you try being pals with the daughter? What are you getting at? Well, I'll take it in the store here. Now, some of the kids could give me fits if I didn't make it a practice to be pals with them. It pays off, Mr. Gildersleeve. You? Halloween's coming up, you know. Every shop window in the block will be soaked except mine. Well, how do you work that, Petey? Well, when the kids gather under the street light with their bars of soap, I put on a false face and go right along with them. You, my goodness. <laughs> when they come to my window, I say, Mr. Peavy's a good egg. Let's soak the window next door. <laughs> Maybe you're pulling my leg. <laughs> Maybe I am. Did you give me a great idea? You know, you're pretty shrewd. Well, if I do say so, when they passed out the brains, I wasn't off somewhere feeding the chicken. <laughs> Right, George, I'll start cultivating Babs. There's no reason why she shouldn't like me. Well, no. At times, children get a little possessive. She shouldn't stand in the way of her mother making new friends. No, she shouldn't. Actually, she isn't being fair to her mother. If the girl insists on keeping her mother from seeing me, it's something Mrs. Winthrop could regret the rest of her life. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> pal out of little Babs without her knowing what I'm up to. I have to be diplomatic about this. I won't let anybody know what I'm up to. The smart thing to do is to work it through Leroy. Say, I have an idea. Bertie! Yes, excuse me? Bertie, I've been thinking. We should do something nice for Leroy's little friend, Babs. We should? Yes, indeed. She's been here a month and I'm afraid we've ignored her. So I'd like to do something that'll make a big impression on her. I don't do that. Well, it's Saturday. A good time to do something with the kids. Leroy's birthday isn't until next month, but we could have the party today. Yes, sir. Could you bake a cake, Bertie, if I get some ice cream? I could. But, well, Mr. Gillsleeve, if you really want to do something for the kids, why don't you take Babs and Leroy out in the woods and look for chestnuts? They'd like that. Say, <laughs> it's a thought. I can fix up a nice lunch and we can save the birthday for another emergency. No, Bertie, is no emergency. I just want to do something for the children. Yes, sir. You fix the lunch basket, Bertie, and I'll take them today. Yes, sir. Lunch for how many people, Miss Gilsey? Well, there'll be Babs, Leroy, and me. Now that you mention it, I'll ask Mrs. Winthrop. Yes. You make plenty of sandwiches, Bertie. Everything kids like. Cheese, potato chips, and apples. It's National Apple Week, you know. Don't worry, Mr. Gilsey. That basket will look like the horn of plenty. Oh, fine, Bertie. <laughs> If you're going on a picnic, Bertie will even make a decoy sandwich. <laughs> what's, what's a decoy sandwich? Well, you put that out first to attract the ants, and then you eat on the other side of the tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad idea, Bertie. No, sir, because when you take Miss Winthrop on a picnic, you don't want to be bobbed with no ants. <laughs> <laughs> you now, Bertie, this picnic isn't just for Mrs. Winthrop and me. It's just that I doubt if Babs would go without her mother. Yes. That's the only reason I'd ask Mrs. Winthrop to trek through the woods looking for chestnuts. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I hope Babs doesn't see through me the way that birdie does. Good morning. 
your pie, anybody? Babs, Leroy? Not me, I'm stuck. Oh, that was a wonderful picnic, Throckmorton. Yeah, glad you enjoyed it, Paula. Certainly was. We had everything I liked. Well, Babs, I had you in mind when I packed the basket. Oh, isn't it peaceful and quiet out here? Yeah, great. It's been such a long time since I've seen moss growing under a tree. Oh, look up there at the sun filtering through the leaves. All tinted with red and gold. Yeah, nothing like being out here with the squirrels. <laughs> look, <laughs> there goes one up a tree. Hey, let's follow him. He may show us where the chestnuts are. <laughs> Leroy, let's rest a while. Okay, you and Mrs. Winthrop rest. Come on, Babs, let's go down to the brook. I, I think I'd rather stay here with Mother and Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Uncle's good enough to bring us. Let's give him a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Why don't we all go? Yeah, that is, if Babs and Paula would like to. Oh, we'd love to. Oh, I want to find some chestnuts. You, well, you come with me, Babs. I have a nose for chestnuts. Okay, Miss Winthrop, you come with me. I'll bet we find more than they do. <laughs> Fine. Do you accept the challenge, Throckmorton? You bet we do. Don't we, Babs? Well, if you really know where to find them, Mr. Gildersleeve. Sure. Let them go down by the brook. And we'll look up on the hill where those big trees are. We'll meet you back here in half an hour. Goodbye, Mother. Oh, goodbye, dear. You follow me, Babs. I'll make a path for you right through the leaves. Right, George. This is my chance to make a pal out of the child. You having a good time, Babs? Yes, thank you. Oh, here. You let me help you through this barbed wire fence. You out step on the bottom strand, pull up on the top wire while you slip through. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Now let me hold the barbed wire for you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, am I stretching it high enough? Yeah, that's fine. Hurry, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm not as strong as you. I hate to have to let this barbed wire go. Uh, I wonder if she would when I'm halfway through. <laughs> yeah. There we are. By George, she didn't. <laughs> Gildersleeve, you've won her over. Isn't that a chestnut tree over there? Say, it is. But I, I don't see any chestnuts on the ground. Well, yeah, I guess somebody beat us to it. Too bad. I see some on that lower limb, Mr. Gildersleeve. You suppose you could get them for me? Well, I haven't climbed a tree in quite a while. You won't have to. You're so nice and tall, you can jump and reach the limb and then pull yourself up. You yeah, hadn't thought of that. We, we just can't go back without some chestnuts. Well, yeah, I'll see what I can do. One, two, three! Yeah. Oh, you made it! Yeah, part way. Now if I can just swing a leg over the limb... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. yeah. Now let's shake them down. They won't come down. I, I think you'll have to crawl out on the limb. You have to crawl out on the limb. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it'll hold my weight. Oh, sure it will. Yeah, I guess I can crawl out there. Here goes. You're doing fine. Hey, it's beginning to bend. A few more inches will do it. Look out below! Are you all right, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, I'm all right. How did she get me out on a limb again? <laughs> Another half hour and we'll all be home. Hasn't it been a wonderful day, Mother? Oh, I hate to see it end. Boy, I'm bushed. Well, we've all had a big day. Yeah, I know I have. I'm tired, too. Are you bad? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Paula? Oh, I'm fine. Good. Maybe we can get the kiddies to bed and then slip out for the evening. Hey, Unc, there's that new drive-in movie. Oh, can we stop and see the picture, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yo. <laughs> the children. What about dinner? Well, they sell hot dogs and stuff. Big help. <laughs> Can't we go, Mother, please? Now, Babs, Mr. Gildersleeve has already shown you a wonderful time. Oh, I know, Mother, and I'm sure he isn't going to disappoint me now. <laughs> Here goes my Saturday night. <laughs> Thank goodness the coming attractions are open. Well, the feature should be interesting. Yeah, I hope so. 
You would have wasted day. I thought sure I'd have Paula to myself tonight. Oh, here's a feature. Babs, you should like this. It's a musical. Babs? Leroy? Oh, Throckmorton, they're both asleep. They are? <laughs> well, Leroy in one corner, Babs in the other. <laughs> Leroy's still clutching his bag of popcorn. Oh, and look at Babs. Isn't she sweet? Yeah, the sweetest I've ever seen. Her. <laughs> I suppose we should take them home, but I'd hate to miss the picture. Sure, they're happy. And so am I. We're practically alone for the first time, too. Mm. Oh, it looks like a good cast, doesn't it? You know, you know, perhaps I could see better if I got out from behind this steering wheel. Mind if I slide over a little closer to you? <laughs> well, you, you should be comfortable. Everyone else is. Yeah, thank you. You're right, George, at last I outsmarted Babs. Yeah, <laughs> this is more like it. <laughs> yeah, I've been looking forward to this all day. You did go to a lot of trouble today, just for us. Well, this is worth it. You know, Throckmorton, today's the first chance I've had to really get to know you. You're quite exceptional. Oh, you're so thoughtful and considerate of the children and me. Frankly, when I came to Summerfield, I hardly expected to meet a man as, as interesting as you. <laughs> uh, Throckmorton? <laughs> Quite Throckmorton! Greg Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. If the folks at your house eat lots of sandwiches, make sure they have the best sandwich filler you can buy. Keep stocked with Velveeta, Kraft's golden pasteurized processed cheese food. Velveeta, with its fine, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor, gives you a delicious sandwich. And Velveeta makes sandwiches mighty nourishing, too, because it's rich in important food values from milk. So make it your handy helper for hearty, good-eating sandwiches and snacks. Get the cheese food of finest quality, Velveeta, made only by Kraft. Throckmorton. Throckmorton. Yes. Throckmorton. Yes, I see. Oh, Paula. I guess I must have closed my eyes for a moment. Yes, you did. Yeah, but I... Well, yeah, I'm sorry, Paula. But the evening isn't over. There's still plenty of time to talk while the kids are asleep. Um, Mother! Oops, Babs is awake. <laughs> yes, dear? I'm hungry. Mr. Gildersleeve, may I have a hot dog? Yeah, can I have one too, huh? Yeah, what's the use? <laughs> Two hot dogs coming up. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Barbara Whiting, Elsie Holmes, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. Musical composition by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of those famous Kraft quality foods. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. In a sandwich, what do you like best? Say, in a cold beef sandwich, a cheese sandwich, egg salad, salami, what do you like best? Well, if you've ever tried it, I'll bet you'll say Kraft prepared mustard. Because when you add a little Kraft mustard, you add a lot of tang. In fact, there are two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard, mild and delicately spiced, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand. And remember, the next time you make a sandwich... When you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Buy Kraft's prepared mustard. Groucho Marx, you bet your life. He